Hi everyone, Nancy here. Um, you're broad, broad, abroad. I'm back. I know I've been gone for a little while. I mean, I haven't been gone. You haven't seen me. That's because we had a lot of video. I, and I do have some video for Fintorn, but there was a couple of things that I thought I would just tell you kind of in person. The first thing is um, about our ordeal to get to Fintorn. It was probably the biggest, you know, travel thing that happened to us. Well, we had some stuff happen in Edinburgh too, but anyway. We finished our laundry at the Majestic Laundrette with the two women who we never did understand what they asked us. We just gave them money and they gave us money back, so I guess it was fine. Um, we took an Uber up to Queen Street Station, which is where we were taking the train up to Inverness and then to Forest. Forest is like five miles outside of Fintorn and, and that's the closest you can get. You have to get a cab to go in. So anyway, we get to Queen Street Station and we found out that some of the trains weren't running and it and it was raining but it's scotland and it rains and it was like september so we were a little flummoxed and we just figured they were saying that just going one way they were not running so so we hunkered down found a place to sit because everything was delayed and then it came across that the whole place was shutting down and all the trains had stopped running. Queen Street Station was shutting down. There was no way for anybody to get anywhere. And we were like, well, we've already paid to be in, in, in Fintorn. And we were only going to be there two nights. So it was like, we're going. So we get out of there. We run. We get an Uber. takes us to the Buchanan bus, Buchanan bus station. And here's, the, here's the picture of this. And it was a mob. It was crazy everybody was there and there was this huge long line and this woman comes up to me she's going down the line she says well do you have train tickets and i said yeah i showed them to her she goes oh you don't have to stand on the line you just go over to where your train your your train was gonna your bus is gonna go to inverness just wait there and then when the bus comes you just get on so i went oh okay well that seemed better than waiting in this long line like disneyland with no ride at the end of it so I went back to Lena and I said, oh, it's just, you know, we're supposed to wait. So we're watching down this line of all these buses and all these people that are waiting. And it comes back that, oh yeah, you can go that way, but only if there's room, only if there's nobody bought enough tickets. So we watched people go through two, three buses where there was no room for them. And Lena just went, enough of this and she went back got back in the line and just bought us bus tickets anyway the next bus bus to Inverness we were on it we needed to catch a bus from Inverness to Forest well it was so late by the time we got to Inverness here's the Inverness bus station it was 10 o'clock at night and there was only one more bus going that night up to Forest there was no one there the station was closed there were no buses there was nothing and they basically just said sit here wait for the bus and but the the Inverness bus did come it was a little late but it came and it came to take us to Forest and um, by the time that we got to Forest on this bus we were the only two people on it anymore and the young man that was driving and his name was Kevin they're all named Kevin in the United Kingdom I don't know. they're all named Kevin Anyway, he was so nice because it was like 1130 at night and he's dropping us by the side of the road in a town where we have no reservations. We don't know how to get a hold of a cab. And he was so sweet. He refused, he refused to leave us there. He said, I'm going to call you a cab and I'm going to wait till they come and get you lovely ladies. In the meantime, we had called the caravan, the play, the caravan park and we called them and said, we don't know when we're getting there, probably midnight. And they said, oh, the caretaker goes, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go over. I'm going to turn on the lights. I'm going to turn on the heat. And you just come in the morning and I'll leave the door open. And you just come in the morning and register. And I said, okay. We got into our cute little caravan that had two bedrooms and it was very sweet. Here's some pictures of the caravan uh, place and our particular caravan. And... 
we settled in after a very, very long day. But thank you to all the people that helped us because, you know, the kindness of strangers. Okay, so now it's time to talk about Fintorn. I did finally make it there. And the first time I had ever heard about Fintorn was in this movie called My Dinner with Andre that had uh, the theater director Andre Gregory and the actor Wallace Shawn. And it's a great movie. If you haven't seen it, it's very interesting. But anyway, Andre Gregory talks about going to Fintorn and how they had two gardens, one for them and one for the insects and how they kept the roof on the community building on by the energy of the rocks. And this was like Culloden was my big Scotland thing. And this is what Lena wanted to do. So we went to the Fintorn Foundation. The Fintorn Foundation was um, a little bit of a letdown, I will say, because the people were not really all that interested in us being there, even though we were there in the in the caravan and everything. They just, they didn't seem to like, nobody was very friendly, to be honest with you. They had a little store and I don't know, we just really felt like outsiders. And so it was very disappointing, especially for her, um, because this was the big thing that she wanted to do. But I'm, I want to just tell you a little bit about it. Um, it was co -cre it was created in 1962 and then made official in 1972. And it was created by these three people, this married couple, Eileen and Peter Caddy, and Dorothy McLean. And Dorothy McLean is the one who kind of put it on the map. She believed in meditating with the spirits of other, of the planets, basically the plants and animals. And they were trying to put a garden in this very sandy soil and worried that nothing was going to happen. So she got into her meditation and got into talking to them and talking to the, the vet, you know, the plant life and finding out how they could uh, plant something that would grow. And it worked. It worked. And they not only grew things, they grew huge things. And there's a world renowned 40 pound, is a 40 pound um, cabbage, which they still do these big, huge cabbages. So I guess maybe they did keep the bugs away. I don't know. Anyway, it was founded on and still runs on these three principles um, that the key to living is inner listening. Which means the second one is that work is love in action. So they do the same kind of thing that everything is intentional. If you're going to go to work, they have a little meditation beforehand and they, they ask for guidance, they ask for help. And then the last one is that you co-create with the wisdom of nature. It's a very small community. You can go there. They have retreats. They have conferences. You can go work there. Um, I mean, if you're into it, it's kind of cool. But again, So Lainey and I took an excursion to the end of the world, Fintorn Village, and there we finally will give you some video from the day. Oh, hello. Hi, everybody. So do we do a live update when we could? We're in a Lane and I. Yes. We're in this really, really cute little um, restaurant in uh, it's called the Bakehouse. It's in Findhorn Village, um, at the edge of the world. No, it's right on the sea, and I'll try to take some pictures of the sea to send to you. But once we leave the Bakehouse, I don't think we'll have any Wi-Fi. There's just no Wi-Fi. We're out in the hinterlands. Um, let me see if I can show you what it looks like out. You can see it's very sunny and extremely windy. But these are the first blue skies I think we've seen in Scotland. So, <laughs> so this is our live update for now. I don't know, probably we'll do one last one in Edinburgh before we part ways and Lena returns to you guys and I head off to Italy. Yeah. It'll be fun. Okay, bye.